I'm Ruth Osborne, Quentin. I was a Quentin. We lived on top of Sparrowhawk Mountain. We only had one way in, or we had to go up towards Sparrowhawk Camp. And Daddy had a wagon, and that was our travel. And it was my job to get out of the wagon and rock the wheels so the horses could rest. My mother was Jenny Towie, T-O-W-I-E, Quentin. And my dad was Felix Quentin. He was a Baptist preacher and he moved us around. But we lived down by the river until I was about three years old on my mother's original, the original land of the, the Towie clan. And we, Daddy, like I said, Daddy had the house up there built. I think we had 20 acres up there. Uh, you couldn't even hardly raise good rocks up there. We were on top of that mountain for, well, we were down on my mother's place down by the river uh, before we moved up there. And Daddy had a house half built, we moved up there. Anyone back in the 40s know what kind of house you got. Uh, we thought we was rich when he finally put good wooden floors in it without cracks in them. Before he just rough timber in there and we'd put a car, uh, an argumental floor and the wind would blow it up. It's like the time we, Mama used to go down there and build a fire under a tub and, and heat her water to wash. And I remember one time my brother and sister, we played rough, you know. Uh, they put me in a tub, and she had to go catch me. I was going down the river. They always used me as a guinea pig. I was the youngest of the kids. We just used lock blocks and things to make. Uh, we would check the junk pile, make sure they didn't throw anything away. At that time, the city had a dump up on the top of Sparrowhawk Mountain on the north side of the road. And we would go up there and see what we could find. The things we had, Daddy farm down on my mother's pro old property, the family property, and he had arrowheads you wouldn't believe. And we played with them, they were just rocks to us, and there'd be a treasure now. Well, my sister and I had to milk the cows. Uh, my brother never learned to milk, and he, he wouldn't learn to milk. So we had to milk the cows, and uh, so my sister and I finally figured out, we'd bring the little pigs back, we squirt milk in her face. And the piggies learned where that milk came from. And we, that's when we got in trouble, when Daddy that got home, the cows were dry, had already been milked, well, we had a bunch of little piggies that went out and <laughs> fed themselves. Well, Daddy had a pig that he kept with him a lot. This uh, he called Tagalone. He'd walk to town, it's six miles from the top of Sparrowhawk Mountain, to town. He'd walk to town, that pig went with him one time. He had to get a ride home, have some of the Holly's pig at home. But he was called, the pig's name was Tagalone. Never got hungry. I mean, we got hungry but we, we, for something we wanted. Uh, we were poor. As Daddy said, the poor people called us poor. But everybody was. Because I had an aunt that lived up there across the holler from us, and my grandma and grandpa lived across the holler from us. If anyone knows the top of Sparrowhawk Mountain, we had to come down the hill. There was a well, used to be Sunshine Tavern down there. We'd come down and get water, or there was another well up, up, up on a up ten little ways. Uh, and we had a wet weather spring down at the bottom. But we had, a lot of times, we would walk across the, the flat up there, it's flat on top of Sparrowhawk, and go clear over to what they call, we, it, toward Elephant Bluff, we call it Clubhouse, and have to go down the hill and the spring was back up in a hollow. We carried water, I guess it was two miles. The river, where we don't talk Sparrowhawk, you could look up, look down, see the Illinois River. Beautiful place now, but it was bad back then because we didn't have anything, no electric, you know, anything. And if our parents told us to go outside before we went to bed, that don't go play, go out there and use the bathroom where well, you could. That was, the way, that was the expression I used, go, out, go outdoors. We were ta taught to trap. We'd set out our traps and run them for possums. We taught how to put a stick over their neck and break their neck so we could kill them. We had a little, it wasn't a cave, it was just some rocks along there that we could set a, uh, that trap on. And of course, we always had squirrel dogs, a squirrel dog. We always had a dozen dogs. And 
my daddy, no, no, the two other kids were too lazy. And to get to go someplace was something. And I went possum hunting with him a lot. We walked all over the top of that mountain, possum hunting. Uh, I'd carry the lantern, I'd get tired, he'd carry it. And he gets a far ahead of me, all I could see is the light. And there was all kinds of spooks right there to grab me. He and Mama would get out in the winter time and cut wood. And he would take a rick wood to town and sell it. And I can't remember how much wood was back there, but it's like a dollar and a quarter or something. It may have been two and a half, but that had been a lot of money back then. A lot of times he came back in the dark. But we always managed to meet him to see what kind of candy he brought us. Sunshine Tavern was a beer joint down under the hill. Uh, one of my, two, well, my aunt and uncle played there on Saturday night. That's why she worked her through, uh, herself through uh, high school. But when we would butcher, she would save all the lard. And someone was laughing because Mama would can sausage. She'd cook the sausage and put them in jars and have them. We didn't have refrigerators. Uh, we got our first ice box, which was an ice box. I still refer to them as ice box. Uh, when we lived on top of the hill, he, Daddy came bringing our ice box in. We thought we was rich. We had an ice box. Because we'd have to walk down the hill. That's the ice man. And I don't know what we, all we could carry was 25 pounds. And we carried up the hill. And that was a long walk up the hill. I imagine going up that hill was about half a mile. We went fishing. And I was carrying the cane poles. I started home. And I get tired, you know, they're dragging her. They hit the ground. I got mad and jabbed one, a couple of them in a, and broke them. So I got outside the daddy's property in a little field. and. There was a bunch of bushes there. I mean, it was almost like a hideaway. And so I was afraid to go home, so I hid in those bushes. I'd watch my daddy go by, and he had a frown on his face, and he'd go by, and there was a hollering for me. Well, I'm scared of the dark. So when it started getting dark, I came out. They had already sent my sister down the hill to get somebody out to help find me. <laughs> but we talked about going to school at, at Needmore, it was one room schoolhouse that one time I remember the mothers got together and made soup for us. They had a little kitchen on her back, but there wasn't anything back there. So the thing, the only thing that I know, know that they played in school was marbles. The boys all had wore out breeches on the knees. But at home, if we played ball, we used a stick. And what did you uh, make a ball out of? Out of socks or anything we could find, roll it up and make a ball. But I don't remember playing ball that much. I, ne I couldn't run. I had chronic appendicitis from the time I was in the seventh grade. <laughs> Didn't know it till, till 1963 when I had finally got my appendix out. Did you bring your lunch to school? Uh, my biscuit and egg, yeah. Chicken laid that enough eggs, we'd, that's what we'd have, biscuit and egg. And of course, the kids made fun of us, but all back, back out in Needmore, I don't remember that too much because I was just the first grade. And, but when we went to Messina, they made fun of us because that was close to town and, and they had light bread. And light bread was a luxury to us. I mean, it, we didn't get it very often. Every so often, they would bring uh, applesauce, peanut butter, and it seemed like that was all. I can't remember that. But Daddy would give us a nickel. Little old Steve of crackers was a nickel box of crackers. And we'd get, he'd give us a nickel and that's what we'd eat what we got there. Other times we ate our biscuit and egg. Ice cream was a luxury. I remember riding to town with my, in the wagon with my dad, and I had sat down by that old rock store behind the, down on, between Water and Muskogee, and he tied his horse down there, and for some reason they were tying the horse up, I had to stay with the wagon. And there's a little girl came down there, and she, uh, she was eating an Eskimo pie, what we called them back then, and uh, she gave me a bite of that. I, that's probably the first ice cream I remember eating. I didn't even know they sold new clothes until I got out of school and, and started to work. I thought there was all hand-me-downs. <laughs>